Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Ashwagandha is a unique plant that has been used in ancient medicine for over 5,000 years. Today on our third episode in Exploring Herbalism series, we will be taking an in-depth look at ashwagandha root, its history and role in Ayurvedic medicine. Bob and Raleigh identify the plant that ashwagandha root comes from, as well as what the word ashwagandha really means when translated into English. And we're not horsing around. Learn how new technologies in herbalism are leading to discovery of new breakthrough health benefits that ashwagandha has to offer. So sit back, relax, and get ready to live forever young. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live Forever Young Radio. I'm Bob Gilpatrick. I'm here with Raleigh Culp. Raleigh, how how's you it doing, going, today? Bob? I'm doing good, good, as usual. You have your champions gear on. Yes, I am wearing the double champions. You know, we got it. We got to represent the Super Bowl champs and the, Lightning Stanley and the, Cup and the Lightning are the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah, as we well. can still claim that title for at least one more year. So I'm going to claim it for as long as I can. <laughs> That's great. Now, winning championships can be very stressful, right? There you go. Yeah, and you got to perform. You got to be able to handle the psychological tolls that losing can bring you, and getting injured can bring you. So, one of the things that we're doing on our third episode of exploring herbalism, the series, is we'll be looking at ashwagandha root today. Um, ashwagandha root has actually been something that's been around for a really long time. Um, it's actually known as an adaptogen, right? And so basically, that means it adapts to what your body needs. Yes, and it's originally was a plant that grew in India. Mm -hmm. And some people say as long as 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. they started using the root. It's right? like, yeah, it, now what I've heard, it's like kind of like an evergreen shrub. Yeah, it's a shrub. Maybe it's like a shrub, you know, about three feet high. Yeah. And it gets these roots that are like fingers mm -hmm. that kind of spread out. And they're maybe as big around as your finger, some, mm -hmm. and they taper off. And they harvest the the whole plant mm -hmm. okay? and so they will go around and dig around the, the base of the plant and then once the soil is loosened up they'll pull the plant out and the roots are there and they just cut the rest of the plant off and then the that you have to wash all the dirt off of the mm -hmm. roots mm -hmm. before they dry them out yeah and then they dry them out and powderize them and you can use it in pill form or you can use it just as powder that you're going to mix into make a cup of tea, mm -hmm. or you can mix it with milk or honey. I don't mind a little and, dirt in my root. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just kidding. But, I mean, we talked about on another uh, show called Our uh, Fruits and Vegetables Less Nutritious Now, how important dirt is. So, you know, a little dirt never hurt yeah. anybody. God made dirt, and dirt don't hurt, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just, no, we, we, we get all the dirt but out of the stuff case, we get. But in this case, they kidding. want the dirt out because the active ingredient is in the root and they're not quite sure exactly how it will interact with probiotics right which tend to be in the dirt sure so they're like let's get rid of all the bacteria right and because they just want that pure root yeah right? you got to have the pure stuff yeah. you know <laughs> and this you know the plant was originated in india and they used it in the form of medicine called ayurvedic medicine right and the word ashwagandha actually means the smell of a horse. Yes, you were mentioning yeah. that. Because the root itself, if you smell it when it's fresh, it does smell like a horse. But also, it is known for its its properties of giving virility. Yes. So it's unique, ashwagandha, in the fact that it can help you with strength. Right. But at the same time, it can calm you down. Right. Isn't so that it crazy? can give yeah. you energy but calm at the same time so you have this calm sense of alertness and energy that's something right. that's something you definitely would need if you had to focus for a test you wouldn't want to be wrapping your pencil on the thing you know you'd want yeah. to be able to have that nice calm easy energy and focus so you can keep going on yes. the test but not get distracted you know because sometimes exactly. you take stuff that gives you energy and if it's got stimulants in it you're like oh my gosh right. I, I don't know what to focus on there are lots of places now in northern africa that grow ashwagandha and even now in other countries the middle east um there's a big farm in southern oregon that grows ashwagandha now as well well the 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 one of the researches that we found is that yeah 
they actually it used to be really hard to grow, but we found ways to grow it in our area. Yeah, it and, grows in sandy soil that mm-hmm. drains really well, mm-hmm. where there's a lot well, of porousness <laughs> to the soil, right. so that the roots don't have a hard time spreading out. Mm, okay. And if the soil is too hard, then because you're harvesting the roots, mm-hmm. has a hard time creating as much root that you would want for the yield. Mm-hmm. And when they when they harvest the plants, it has to be at a very specific time. Mm. And when you plant them, they have to be just the right spacing apart. Okay. So the roots don't get Interact intertwined with each other. and get aborted and and you also want to harvest it at exactly the right time before it starts to die off, mm. right? Because when a plant starts to go dormant and die off, a lot of the nutrients from the roots will make their way up into the seeds. So they don't stay in the root. Yeah. So, and so you want to you want to watch carefully when the plant just starts to turn a little bit brown. In in, in Oregon, you know, you're talking about the first of October till about the fifteenth of October, mm-hmm. then you need to harvest during that time, and you want the plants evenly spaced so that you have enough roots to make a harvest. Now, one of the things that you're saying is that when you wait too long, all the nutrients go up towards the seeds that are in the plant. Right. So, some of the nutrients I think that we're talking about, and some of the main ones that are in. Um, ashwagandha root technically withania somnifera is the name of the plant they're alkaloids and lactones and those are the things known as withanolides yeah and the withanolides are steroid type substances Mm -hmm. that are and there's there's about 900 different types right and numerous ones are in ashwagandha Mm -hmm. and so that's why when you have an herb like ashwagandha you say well how can it help with both energy and relaxation and help with the adrenals and the thyroid well it's because there's numerous bioactive compounds in ashwagandha root okay okay so So, yeah that that's one of the weird things i think that's what why it's kind of known as an adaptogen because it has the ability to kind of morph into what your body needs you know yeah and yeah. those those compounds are what are allowing it to do that, which is kind of cool. And you had mentioned one of the ones that it's it's kind of weird that it helps both out, but one of the really good benefits of it is adrenal and thyroid health. Right, you right. Know? Which is a good thing because your adrenals and thyroid communicate with each other. Right. And you have the different negative feedback loops that they signal when to secrete more of this and that. And so ashwagandha tends to help to keep that in balance right and and so because it does that i think is is a big reason why it helps with the stress and anxiety relief that it's known for as well right because it can kind of help the communication between adrenal and thyroid and And ultimately regulate your cortisol levels which is very important to not have too high and cortisol levels also need to be at a certain level during your sleep cycle Mm. and at different levels when you're awake as well Mm -hmm. and sometimes that can get reversed so ashwagandha is as you said an adaptogen and Mm. can help to balance your hormones which in effect also is partly why it helps balance your emotions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, a lot of the stuff we read says it's very adept at doing that Um, a lot of it probably related Um, another thing that was really kind of cool. I didn't know before we did the research, but it makes a lot of sense, is that it actually helps to rejuvenate your nervous system. Yeah. Right? So your nervous right. system, is a lot of that's tied to anxiety. And if you have a nervous tick, you know, that's like part of anxiety. A lot of time right. anxiety kicks off a nervous, t- a nervous tick. And so one of the things I did just figure out that it, it helps to rejuvenate the nervous system. So if yep. you have issues with that, that's something you could definitely use. Right. And yet, which is part of the reason why it also helps with your immune system Mm -hmm. your nervous system touches all the way into your gut and a lot of the feedback that is being given and therefore the actions of your immune system are being passed along Mm. from information in the nervous system in your gut right that is being acted upon by your microbiome right that's then connected to your vagus nerve mm-hmm. which goes all the way up into your brain yeah we did a right? show called breaking down digestion 
where we yep. go a little bit more into depth about how that works with uh, the creation yep. of the uh, probiotics and the uh, metabolites yep. in the gut and the neurotransmitters and things like that. So and in this case, with a, a root like ashwagandha that tends to give new life to your to your nervous system, it's going to be beneficial to your immune system and your emotional health as well mm -hmm. and your digestion. Right. Now, we always talk about it, but reducing inflammation. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things that ashwagandha is really good at is helping reduce inflammation. And we know that chronic inflammation, as we talked about on plenty of other shows, it leads to chronic disease, right? Yep. And so by helping to kind of mitigate all this inflammation, you're not just avoiding disease, but kind of the whole idea of boomer products is to kind of slow down the aging process right right so this is another tool that you, tool. you have to help that uh, right. arrest that process of aging right it's also very good for helping people calm down before it's time to go to sleep so mm -hmm. a lot of people will Makes take sense, yeah. ashwagandha an hour to a half hour before bedtime mm -hmm. and it creates this calming effect and then you can tell from that, if it helps you to sleep, there's all these other really great benefits of getting a good night's sleep, such as detoxifying better. Right, right. right. We talked about that a lot, right. you know. And so there are a lot of people that will take an ashwagandha pill just before bedtime and utilize it with that. And it goes really well together with our good night formula, which then has melatonin and many other compounds Hops in it. Hops extract. Yeah. Um, it's also what the, one of the good things, we won't get too much into it, but it does have a lot of additional minerals that help you absorb those natural things and utilize them to sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, again, we'll, we're exploring herbalism and we'll get into the good night formula and how it works yep. in another show. So keep, yep. keep your eye on for that one. Yep. So I think, Raleigh, that, you know, this is a very, a very prominent, herb in the world of herbalism oh yeah you hear about years. it all the time yeah, there's scientific studies about it now i see commercials they, all day long for ashwagandha yeah. gummies or whatever it is you know yep and the, we were able to figure out that bioactive ingredients in it but five thousand years ago they just knew that it helped it was helping and so they they still grow ashwagandha in the same regions of india f where they grew it five thousand years ago mm. and now of course you can you can grow your own if you have the right soil and climate <laughs> right now and one then, of the things about herbalism and what we were talking about in the other two shows is the technology that allows us to extract it from those roots of that with somnifera and yeah. then be able to like with our product we we deliver it in one gram uh, servings yeah. So you can get a gram of it every time you take two pills. It's 500 milligrams each. But that's yeah. that dosing that gives you the ability to say, okay, I take this much and I get this effect. I take a little more and it's a little better. Or maybe I should take a little less. But it, it allows right. you, instead of, like we said before, <laughs> trying to boil up some roots and figure out how much is in there, you know, uh, maybe this much or maybe that much. The, yeah. the, the advent of new technology in herbalism itself has really helped us to right. harness the power and unleash the potential. Yeah, and also it's hard. You can take a, an ashwagandha root and wash it off, and you can actually chew, chew on, on it, it, but it tastes very bitter. So, like a horse. Yes. I, I mean, we were talking about it tasting like a horse, so I don't know if I would <laughs> yeah. want to do and that. And so <laughs> that's the other thing about technology is by putting it into, into a pill form, it takes away the You can avoid the, the horse smell. It takes away the bitter. So. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. But no, this is, this is good. So this is why we're exploring herbalism, because there's so many different aspects and so many different herbs. I mean, we're probably not going to cover every one, but we're going to cover a lot of them. And we're going to cover a lot of the way that they work and that they uh, can kind of interact and help each other uh, kind of up the benefits, so to say. Yep. When you make a stack of these type of uh, herbs, it'll help yep. with a lot of health benefits. But... Um, besides that, I don't have much else on ashwagandha today. <laughs> well, Raleigh, thanks again for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on Live Forever Young Radio. And we'll see you on the next show. Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Check us out at liveforeveryoungradio.com. <laughs>